today we're going to be talking about stick welding electrodes and you're going to you're going to be the one that has to buy these electrodes so let's talk about the the factors that go into how you purchase these rods so what are the factors what's the base material that you're welding what are the uh, positions that you're going to be welding in you know, overhead uh, vertical horizontal flat um, what are the strength requirements for the weld itself uh, do you need fast fill do you need fast freeze uh, what diameter are you buying what is the amperage capability of the rods all these factors go into how you purchase uh, welding electrodes and we're going to talk about that base materials are crucial to selecting rods and uh, so get to know what your base material is, is that you're welding in and what are the requirements are you uh, what are the preheat conditions? What are the inner pass temps that you need? Uh, is it alloys that you're welding? Is it dissimilar metal, metals, uh, A514 to, to A36? Um, and if so, what are their strength requirements? Usually you meet the, the, the requirement of the lesser metal and you're fine in that environment. Other factors come up. Other factors include uh, uh, joint configuration. Is it hot rolled versus cold rolled? What are the strength requirements? So knowing more about your base material is gonna, gonna make it so much easier to select uh, the proper rods. Uh, position is the next factor we need in selecting a welding rod and AWS puts numbers on the rods for permissible uh, uh, positions for those rods. It's generally the third number, but it's used in conjunction with the fourth number, which is the the uh, flex coating. So, uh, number one on the welding rod, is, like in 18, is um, all positions. Two is horizontal or flat. Three is flat only, and four is overhead or uh, vertical down. Here we have two really common rods. There's a 6010 and a 7018 rod. And because of the one in the third position, that means they're any position rods. Uh, sometimes there'll be a, an adjustment in the capability of the rod because of the last number or the flux coating. Strength is another factor in the AWS designation on these rods. Here we have a 16 and 70,000. That's 16 and 70,000 pounds per square inch of a cross section uh, of a weld made with these rods being pulled, being pulled apart. That's how much force it would take to, to pull these apart. AWS uses the last two numbers together. So just the one designation doesn't mean that it's an all position rod. It's in conjunction with the flux coating that's on the rod. So for instance, uh, 10, one zero means um, all position, but it's a high cellulose sodium. Eleven is uh, high uh, um, high cellulose potassium. Fourteen is an iron powder uh, titana. Uh, Eighteen is an iron powder um, hydrogen. So the rods are designated as different components of the flux as well as position. Steels are manufactured to chemical compositions. An A514 is different; is a different uh, um, combination of materials than an A36. So uh, when you start to alloy steels with nickel, with copper, with chrome, with uh, uh, molly, you're after a mechanical composition and the, the chemical uh, uh, standards don't apply anymore because you're after a mechanical uh, advantage, either strength or uh, corrosive properties. When you see a, two, uh, a letter number designation at the end of the numbers, AWS has indicated that that's an alloyed rod. A1, um, B1, C1, A1 is a um, carbon moly rod, uh, B1 is a um, half percent chrome, half percent moly, so it's chrome moly rod. C1 is a two and a half percent nickel, so it's a, a carbon nickel rod. So the little designation at the end indicates that it's an alloyed rod. When a carbon steel is alloyed with titanium, copper, or vanadium, they're looking for a mechanical strength advantage. Uh, the lattice structure of the copper and the microstructure is changed by adding the alloy to it and the strength is substantially increased. When silicon, nickel, 
uh, chromium, phosphorus, are added to uh, uh, carbon steel, then the advantage is in corrosive uh, capability. And so they're looking for uh, corrosive resistance by the addition of those components to uh, common carbon steel. All these alloys provide advantages in strength and in corrosive ability, uh, but it makes it more difficult for you as a welder to select a rod because you need to know what the material is and we want to weld with the uh, correct filler metal. Lastly we come to rod diameter and that's going to be um, decided by the job application that you're going to do. Uh, you're going to use big rods to get the job done fast. You're going to use small rods to control the heat. Um, that's going to be determined by the job. So. Uh, a short discussion about uh, uh, rod selection. Hope this helps. Uh, thanks for watching at Longevity's Learning Lab, and I hope you learned something today.